Why do some people wake up in the middle of the night with their hands going numb and they feel like they kind of have to shake it out to get the feeling to come back? And yes, it is related to your nerves. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 47-year-old woman that came to my office with tingling in both hands. This worse at night and worse when she does things like driving and she feels like she has to change hands and shake her hands out to get the feeling to come back. It's mostly in these three fingers and many of you guys got the answer. It's carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal what? Carpal tunnel syndrome is a super common condition where the median nerve or the nerve right there in our wrist can get impinged and it causes numbness and tingling in the distribution of the nerve. And over time, it can actually cause you to lose function in your hand. The median nerve does originate from your neck and then goes down into a variety of branches that split off and go all the way down into your hand, like in this diagram. The median nerve's role is to provide sensation on this part of the hand, which is the palmar surface on the first three fingers, as well as the inside of the ring finger. And it does wrap around a little bit on the backside. It also supplies the muscles that provide our strength in some of the muscle groups in our hand. If the symptoms involve these two fingers, it's not gonna be carpal tunnel syndrome, but most likely gonna be a problem with the ulnar nerve. That's another topic for another day. As the nerve travels down your arm, it'll pass under what's called the transverse carpal ligament and enter a part of our hand called the carpal tunnel. Think of it as a passageway for some of the structures to enter our hand, including bones, ligaments, and nerves, as well as artery and vein. So any condition that may cause swelling inside of that tunnel or inflammation in there can cause symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome. I thought that only affected people that type all day. Basically, if the nerve gets pinched, it can cause numbness, pain, and even weakness. So what does that happen when you sleep? When we're awake and conscious, when we start to feel numbness and tingling somewhere, we can adjust our bodies to make that symptom go away. But when you fall asleep and you sleep with your hands in a contorted position, it'll pink off the nerve and cause numbness and tingling, and then you're asleep, so you don't really adjust yourself to make that go away. So if you sleep with your wrist bent or in a weird position, your hands will go numb. And if you do that repetitively, over time, the symptoms can get worse. Now, it's not only with sleeping, but it can be hereditary. So some people can be born with a naturally small carpal tunnel, and it makes them more prone to developing the situation. And many of you guys mentioned it. It's really common during pregnancy because we start to get swelling in a part of our body, and that is included the carpal tunnel, so the swelling will compress the nerve. It can be really uncomfortable, and I had it during both of my pregnancies, and it's actually really miserable. The good news in pregnancy is it will go away after the baby is delivered and your body is restored to its natural form. But in some conditions like diabetes, congestive heart failure, or thyroid abnormalities, it won't really go away. And yes, we do see it commonly in people that do repetitive motions with their hands, such as people that sew a lot or type a lot. That's because repetitive hand motion will cause the tendons to slide up and down within the carpal tunnel and cause inflammation in the area which can compress the nerve. So how do we diagnose it besides the symptoms? Doctors will do a physical examination which will include something called the Tunnel sign where we can tap on the wrist over the carpal tunnel and see if those symptoms are exaggerated. There's another test that we can do called a Phalen's test where we have patients bend their wrists like this at 90 degrees and hold it for one to two minutes. And if that causes induction of symptoms like numbness and tingling, that's also positive. We're essentially mimicking what you probably do when you're asleep. Doctors can also perform a physical examination where we look at the hypothenar eminence or this part of the patient's thumb region to check the muscles. And here you can see that this hand has wasting of the muscles called hypothenar wasting. We can perform a test called an EMG to test the nerve and that can help us make the diagnosis if we can't make the diagnosis clinically. Now, yes, other conditions can mimic carpal tunnel syndrome, such as nerves that are being compressed in the neck because remember, the median nerve actually originates here and goes all the way down. So if it's compressed in any part along the way, you can get some symptoms of carpal carpal tunnel. Well, how do we treat it? Mild cases can easily be treated at home and you can buy a carpal tunnel splint almost anywhere, including any drugstore, Walmart, or even Amazon. The key things to look for in a brace is you want to make sure it has a metal backing over the palm region and you want to make sure it keeps your hand in the neutral position. I usually recommend, unless the symptoms are quite severe, to try bracing at night or during activities that aggravate the symptoms. 
Activity modifications are also helpful in the symptoms, as well as seeking the guidance from an occupational or physical therapist. You can check and see if your therapist has certification in hand therapy by looking for the initials CHT or certified hand therapist behind their name. Surgery may be indicated if the symptoms are severe enough, and that's called a carpal tunnel release. It can be done endoscopically or open, but basically we make a small incision and release the carpal tunnel ligament overlying the nerve. Most times we don't even have to put people under general anesthesia to perform that procedure. And in my practice, I do it under conscious sedation, make a very small incision overlying the transverse carpal ligament, and it's done in 15 minutes. It takes a couple weeks to heal from that, but the results are definitive and the problem is fixed. The patient I mentioned at the beginning of the video had the surgery and went home 30 minutes after the procedure was done, and she's remained symptom-free since that time. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.